So yesterday I sat down and tried Rise of the Ronin, the game that 2013 has been calling back. PS3 wants their game back, so they say. And well, I was actually pleasantly surprised. The game, actually when I played it on the PS5, didn't look as bad as people were saying. In fact, the videos that I was seeing didn't make it, you know, looked way worse than what I was playing. Now this game like in from start to finish from my experience reminded me a lot of Ghost of Tsushima now that's not a bad thing it pretty much is Ghost of Tsushima in a nutshell from the way you take over camps and liberate them to the way you upgrade your weapons well you do actually attain new weapons they're not just cosmetic like they are generally in Ghost of Tsushima where you upgrade a set weapon that you get from start to finish but here, you kind of have a few arsenals already and you unlock new ones as you're going along as part of the story until you pretty much get your arsenal. There is like a skill tree that you can undergo, learn new skills. But, and you know, there's also the whole bonding system that you can do within the game to get, you know, increase relationships and uh, standings with different camps and factions and clans and whatnot. So there's that side of it as well. But the biggest difference between this and Ghost of Tsushima, outside of the fact that Ghost of Tsushima allows you to pet foxes, this one lets you pet cats. So uh, this already has a plus one right there. I'm a cat lover, what can I say? But it's the combat. In Ghost of Tsushima, it's more kind of arcade-y, action-y. I wouldn't swear arcade has been disrespectful. More action-y, right? There is skill to it. But it's more action orientated. Whereas here, it reminds me a lot of Sekiro. And, you know, in terms of difficulty and unforgivingness, it edges more to that side. Now, if you enjoy games like Sekiro and, you know, Dark Souls or any game that's on that difficulty, you will pretty much be at home here. Now, as you can see, we could even alter our characters. You start the game designing your male and female character, then at some point you need to pick one of the characters in order to continue the story with. You can even create them as a bobblehead. As you can see, my uh, <laughs> my stream last night decided that they wanted me to make a deformed version of the character. So that is exactly what we did. Now the gameplay you're seeing in the background is just me playing around and chopped up. But overall, uh, it's pretty much what I was expecting and then some. The graphics actually in places look really nice. It looks nowhere near as bad. Now, I'm playing this on performance mode. We did try ray tracing. To me, that's unplayable. And the quality version mode will pretty much be running similar to ray tracing. And to me, that was unplayable as well. Now, for those of you that can do 30 FPS and dips in 30 FPS, power to you. Those options are there if you want to see this in its, you know, in slightly better fidelity but i would much rather have this quality at 60 fps than what they were showing during the trailer i actually don't understand why during the trailers and the showcases they were setting it to max fidelity with 30 fps and it was dipping as well my time playing this i don't think i noticed a single dip maybe it dropped to like 55 Maybe. I mean, I genuinely couldn't tell. There was no screen tearing. I turned motion blur off. So I actually didn't notice anything. The gameplay was fluid. The action was fluid. The NPCs leave a little to be desired in terms of facial animation and graphical design. But my guess is that they decided to tone it down a little in order to maintain that frames, uh, you know, the, the high frame rate. So I can actually uh, see past that. And I'd, I'd wish more companies actually did that, where they actually, you know, toned it down a little bit to maintain that 60. I think that's a lot more important in games than having everything pump out at the best possible graphics. Because at the end of the day, if you want the best possible graphics, go get a PC, go get a 4090. That's where you need to be. Now, in terms of my overall thoughts and feelings for this game... Is it a must-buy? And I have to say, at 70 bucks, probably not. Now, had they had released this at 49 99 I think this is an instant buy. But for those of you that love Sekiro, I can see you going and buying this. 
and enjoying it even at the full price. For me though, the whole stamina gauge system that you guys are all used to, I don't like it. The whole stun lock, getting stun locked, to me that's just not fun. I mean, I'm not a Souls player, I don't claim to be a Souls player, I don't claim to enjoy Souls likes games. So this is coming from a perspective that is outside of that bubble. I really like the aesthetics, I like the scenery, I like the combat, but what I, you know, it was heavily parry focused to combat, and to me that kind of ruined it a little bit. I mean, you can't like knock them out of their combo just by you overpowering them with your combo, not giving them a chance. They can break your combo at any time and then unleash attacks that if you don't parry are going to absolutely murder your health within seconds. And, you know, it takes you forever to take them down, but they can take you down in a few hits. Again, Sekiro, Souls, you guys are used to this. For me, that's just not fun. But one thing the game does offer you is an easier setting. You can change this at any point during the game, and it will just, you know, give you a better experience. The enemies have less health, they're less tanky, and they hit a little less hard as well. Giving you maybe that balanced experience for those people that don't like the Souls genre, don't like that Sekiro difficulty genre. But this, in my opinion, is a spiritual successor to Sekiro. I know people were waiting for a sequel to Sekiro, but this, in my opinion, is it. It's as close as you're going to get anytime soon. Now... Do I recommend you buy this? It's a difficult one. At the end of the day, if you're new to this genre, I would say wait for a discount, wait for a sale. If you love this genre and love the setting, then I'd say, yeah, it's actually not so bad. I mean, people in my chat yesterday when I was asking them, what do you prefer? The game looking like this, maintaining 60, or a game looking like Dragon's Dogma 2, and dropping down to 20 FPS. And everyone said that they would prefer what I'm seeing here, what you're seeing on screen right now. Having a slightly lower graphical fidelity, but maintaining that 60. You have your usual terms of campfire. So in this game, you're using banners. If you click on the banner, it rests you, it refills your potions and everything else. And of course, all the enemies get respawned as well. So do keep that in mind if you are going to use one of those banners. But that is just the thing. It, it, it is pretty much following in those tropes. We have got a flood of these games, unfortunately, recently. They don't seem to be slowing down. And the market for these games seem to be getting more and more saturated. And we're not getting any more of those action oriented games like Ghost of Tsushima, which is a shame. And I kind of hope that this would have been that. And I would have enjoyed it more. At the moment, as a first impression, this game for me is a 7.5. Now, I know if you like the whole Sekiro difficulty and style, this could probably hit like a 7.8 if you did enjoy it. I don't think it hits an 8 just yet. But again, this is based on like two, maybe two and a half hours worth of gameplay. And yeah, the voice acting is good. The animation is smooth, and overall, it's just a really well done game. I don't think the hate going around for this game is justified. What I will say is that people will look at this now and say, 7.5, oh my god, what the hell is this trash? 7.5 is a good score for a game. I don't understand why 7.5 today is deemed as a bad score. It's still a good score. Even 7.8... It's a good score. Not everything has to get the 8s and the 9s and the 10s to be amazing. I've played games that have I've thoroughly enjoyed that I would much rather pay 70 bucks for at 6 out of 10 than I have played games that were a 9 out of 10 that were 70 bucks, right? So I guess it's each to their own and it's based on what you prefer. But to me, when it comes to this game, it's actually... Way better. I mean, I went into this with zero expectations after what I saw, especially the galloping horse. That just became a comical meme on the internet. But, you know, overall, I think the game has got severe. But overall, I think the game has got a lot of potential. It, it just does. You've got different weapons, and each weapon, you know, plays differently, has different combos, has different styles, has different effects. And, you know, 
it adds a variety to the gameplay. So that's my first impressions. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let's have that discussion. But thank you again to Sony for providing me with the review copy. I really appreciate it. And hopefully, you'll, if you have a PS5, you'll check it out. Because it's not a bad game. And like I said, even though I am giving it a 7.5, as you know, for my first impressions, in terms of like my first two, two and a half, three hours worth of gameplay, 7.5 is still a good rating. And this is coming from someone who doesn't enjoy this difficulty, who doesn't enjoy that style of combat overall, where it's all kind of slowed, parry focused and whatnot. So yeah, maybe for you who does enjoy it, you'll give it higher. But this is my impressions. Hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let's have that discussion. And I'll see you in the next one. And the next uh, impressions video I'm going to have is for the demo of Stella Blade. Stella Ass Cheeks. I know you're all waiting for that one. And oh boy, is it going to be a doozy. Right, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, legend.